Hi guys and welcome to Barney on Sew Centre. Today we're joined by the fabulous Emma who is our dressmaking oh. expert, ambassador and tutor. And we're going to be creating a packaway shopper. We're going to follow a step by step guide to show you how to make this so you're never without a bag wherever you go. Brilliant, let's do it. This should be everything that you need to make the packaway shopper. We've got our main fabric that the actual bag will be made from. We've got our lining fabric which will line the handles and make the pouch. Other things you're going to need, you may want to use some clips or pins and um, toggles for right at the end when you add in your drawstring to make it the pack away. Scissors, maybe some snips and one of these is quite handy too. And how could I forget, you need an iron and we've got a pressing mat here too so we can work anywhere. Okay, so I'm good to go. I've cut out my main fabric which I did with scissors, but you could use a rotary cut or whatever you're comfortable with. When you've got your fabric cut out, you're going to use your templates to help you get the perfect shape. We've got our lining here, two pieces, and I've laid them on top of the main fabric, two pieces, and I've got the triangles ready for the pouch later. Either use your scissors, your shears, or you can use a rotary cutter, whatever you're comfortable with, just following the sizes on the pattern. So I'm just going to clip these together because I want to fold my fabric down the middle. I've laid the handle lining on top of the main fabric and it's meeting at the top here, trying to save a bit of time in the long run. You might want to do your handles separately and that's absolutely fine. And what I'm going to do is just fold so these edges meet and then I'll be able to use template A a lot easier. Okay, in your instruction book you'll find template A if you just cut it out you've got a fold down the middle if you line that up with the fold on your fabric and do it the correct way it does help and you're just lining it up with the top and then you will naturally get a lovely curve of the handles so this lines up here again you might want to pin and cut with scissors chalk it out or you may be able to use weights or clips and you could use your rotary cutter again you'll have a preferred method so cut away your first section there using template A. You can use those scraps to make some lovely appliques and things in the future. And then what you need to do is you will be cutting out the curve. Now what you will need is to measure five centimeters here. That will give you a three centimeter handle and a centimeter each side seam allowance. Once you've lined it up, Again, you can pin, weight, or clip, and you can either rotary cutter or cut with your fabric shears, and you'll get the lovely sweep of the handle that way. Then your fabric is ready for step two. So now we've used template A again. We have our lining and main fabric ready to get sewing up our bag. So I'm just going to tidy up the bottom you could use pinking shears or you could swap out your blade on your rotary cutter to a pinking blade and then I can hem the bottom of the handle lining and this is what it looks like. Okay, we've now got our two linings which I've done a nice pinking edge here. You could, if you wish, fold back and hem that. It may create a bit more bulk than you'd like and this would work perfectly fine. Okay, we're ready for step two. We have our main fabric and I have put the handle lining facing the main fabric, clipped it or you could pin it. I'll do the same to the second side and then I'm gonna sew around the top, which is all shown on the pattern. Okay, we're ready for step three. So I am ready to sew my lining to my main fabric. I am on the Ambition 635. And I am also using a cone here, which you can catch a video of Callum talking more about using a cone. We've got a lovely variegated thread, which is going to look gorgeous against the poppies on here. 
and um, I will be using a feature of the Ambition 635, the IDT, which takes away the need of a walking foot. So I'm sticking to a centimetre seam allowance. Okay, we've now sewn the lining of the handles to the main fabric, so we're ready to clip. And I'm clipping, which will give a much nicer finish. And I've also trimmed at the end of the handles where we'll be joining, just so we don't get bulk in unnecessary places. Okay, so you're now ready to turn through, and then you can press with your iron and get a beautiful finish. So the clipping has made it that this lays lovely and flat. I've just used this object, anything blunt, turn through to create your neat handle and then we will move to step four where we're going to top stitch and it looks really beautiful and neat. You know, lovely flat edges makes it so much easier to sew and looks better. There we are. So we've now pressed the bag open so we're ready to join the handles we're going to put the handle tops face to face and sew a centimeter from the edge to create a seam that you will then hold open and press with the iron will then permanently hold that down when we do the top stitch in the next stage <laughs> i'm just clipping the handles together not that they move much on the machine a centimetre from the edge, just create that seam. Trim any threads. Remove any pins or clips. Open by hand and just start to press it with your fingers. Now we use the iron. So now I'm ready to top stitch. I'm sewing very near the edge and I've changed my stitch. You don't have to, but you could go quite decorative here. And it's just to hold down that seam that we've pressed and created and a bit of extra strength. So I've just got to where the handles join, so I'm making sure everything's laying flat and I will just continue over the top. Okay, you can see that top stitch is making it lay lovely and flat, really neat and it almost looks like it's been done by hand but it's perfectly neat and equal. So that was just a triple stitch on the machine there. Setting number two. Okay, so we're ready to now think about the pouch that it will be stored in when you pack it away. What I'm gonna do, just for neatness, I like to create a small little hem where the drawstring will come out. So what you need to do is check against your pattern there is an angle that goes here, it's not the right angle. You will turn back just the smallest amount and press, and I'm just gonna run a row of stitching along here, and that will just create that neat edge as the drawstring comes in and out. So, now that you've hemmed the edge, you can go corner to corner on that hem, and then the other end, you'll create a corner to the point there. And just press along. You might want to make yourself a little template. That's just two and a half centimetres. And you could place it in and use it as a bit of a guide to check everything's working. Okay, now you've got your pouches. Line them up on the front of your fabric with the corner. The hem that you've done should be at the side of your bag 
and the point right down onto the bottom seam. We will be trapping that into the seam, but we want to leave this open to put our drawstring in. Once you've got it perfectly lined up, you do the same on the other. You can pin or clip, and we will be sewing two centimeters away from the edge that you've pressed here. That will ensure that you've got half a centimeter seam allowance holding your channel in. So we're just sewing away two centimeters from that folded edge there to create the channel for your drawstring. Okay, we now have the pouches in position. They now have the channel ready for the drawstring. It can be drawstring, it could be ribbon. I've chosen a nice khaki colour that matches the leaves on here. I've got a bobkin here, so I'm actually going to thread this through with that. Doesn't matter where you start. What I am going to do is clip this at the bottom though. This must get trapped into the seam so I go about halfway in the channel and when we sew that final seam it will get trapped. The other end, let's just get that out there, the other end we do not want to trap in the seam because this needs to um, be drawn to make pouch. So what I will do is bring it back and I'm going to clip it, it could be pinned just in place there, so it never gets trapped in that seam. I'll do the same on the other one. So step six is complete. I've got the upper drawstring being held either by pin or clip, so it does not get trapped in the seam, but the bottom, I have the cord trapped in the seam. So we're ready to join the bag. Okay, so we've got to put right side to right side if we're sewing up and either pinking shearing the edge or we could overlock the edge. I quite like overlocking at the end so it brings it all together and seals the join. Um, the alternative, you could do a French seam, which in which case you would need to have them almost looking the correct way so you put wrong side to wrong side and complete the French seam sewing up to the edge. So I'm going to do right side to right side and I will clip together to stop any movement. Okay so I've clipped it together, um, possibly err on the side of caution, more clips or pins better to stop it moving. I've made sure, points to note, the top edges here join beautifully because that's what you're going to see when you use the bag. Make sure that the lining is gonna get trapped as you sew, so they're lovely and flat. Same on the other side. I'm making sure that the pouch matches. I've made sure everything's laying flat, it's just sticking up there, that's where the drawstring's being held. The corners are meeting. It's lovely and flat, all edges are joining, and then I will do the one centimeter to the edge. So we've sewn almost like a U-shape here to create the final bag. You can just clip the corner ever so slightly just so it turns through to make a very sharp edge. And then you've got options, if you have sewn it this way, you might want to overlock to join that and neaten the edge. You could use pinking shears or the pinking rotary to really neaten up that edge. But let's see what it looks like. Turn it through. Hopefully your little clips are holding your drawstring for you there. You could use your tool again just to bring the corners through. But there they are. And your pouch 
appears just like that. That's why we trim the corner because it is quite thick on that corner there. Just carefully remove either your pins or your clips. Bring the drawstring together. Tie yourself a little knot and then your toggle should just slide over there. So we've just got some cord toggles here. Just going to pop these on the end. So just press down and guide through the drawstring. Pull that through and then that sits on there. You may want to do a slightly bigger knot, like a second knot, or you could even create a tag to the end with a small piece of fabric just to stop that toggle coming off. Okay, giving it a quick press just so it lays flat. Let's see if it all packs away. So just push it in, just keep feeding it in, grab your toggle. So that's the first of our sew alongs. We're going to do one each month. So do follow us and we'd love to see your lovely versions of this.